Hey folks, today on Soft Plastics 101, we're gonna have a look at frogs. So a bit of a different category, but a very, very effective soft plastic, especially when used correctly. So we're gonna have a look at some different types of frogs, why they're designed the way they are, and some different retrieve techniques for fishing those frogs as well. So firstly, probably one of the most popular frogs that we've had out there for a while is the Z-Man four inch hard leg frogs. So this frog is designed with paddle feet, so when you retrieve that frog, those, those feet will kick like a real frog swimming. And it's got a tapered nose, which makes it nice for weedless rigging to pull through weed and structure and that sort of thing. So that's our hard leg frogs. <clears throat> you can rig it on the surface, but all of these frogs, you can also fish them subsurface on a jig head to prospect around deeper water. I've even seen them paternoster rigged offshore catching reefies and all sorts of things. Because they have so much action in those feet, they definitely attract fish and trigger strikes. So there you go, that's rigged on a chin locks, and because that Z-Man Elastec plastic is buoyant, that, that frog will actually float that hook, allowing you to buzz it, pause it near snags, and attract those fish and trigger those strikes. So that's rigged with no weight, but we might find ourselves out there and it gets a bit windy, and we still need a bit of casting distance. In that case, we can go to a chin locks SWS, and that has a belly weight on there. It helps to keel the plastic, and it gives you a bit more casting distance in the wind, you just need to get that rod tip up a bit higher if you are wanting to fish on the surface and buzz that plastic across weed and lilies and that sort of thing. Extremely effective on species like barramundi, Murray cod, and those fish that will eat off the surface. You know, if you're up in the big barra impoundments, find those little pockets in the weed, buzz them with a frog, and you can get some crazy aggressive surface action. But if you want to go subsurface, here's a snake locks jig head, TT Lewis snake locks, and that allows you to add some weight so that you can get that frog diving down and bounce him in amongst the snags and in amongst that structure. And if you want to create even more fuss in a surface presentation, check out there for that for a surface presentation. So that's a TT Lures buzz locks. So it's got that SWS chin locks jig head to lock that frog on the hook and give you that belly weight. But it's also got this four bladed clear blade on the front. And that blade will create water movement and noise and a bubble trail and other things that attract the fish to the lure. So that's the four inch hard leg frogs rigged on a buzz locks. A recent addition that has been awesome is a baby version of that frog and this is called a 2.75 inch finesse frogs. And you can see the size of him, that is a perfect snack size for bass, uh, mangrove jack and other species that like to smash things off the surface. So that has absolutely slayed the bass, slayed the mangrove jack and there it is again on that hook with no weight so that we can easily fish it right up on the surface get those little paddle feet bubbling across the top, boof, get that surface take. Again, we can put it on that Chinlox SWS, give it some additional weight for casting, and also keel it, and get that rod tip up if we want to buzz it across the surface. And we can also head weight it on that snake locks to get it down in amongst the lilies and weeds and timber, and prospect, we get those little paddle feet going as well. So that's our hard leg frogs and our finesse frog, and here's one that's a bit different the pop frogs. So that's a four inch Z-Man pop frogs. Again, it's got that slot in the back where you can hide your hook. And we've got it pinned on this chin locks jig head. And that chin locks, that'll float on that chin locks. It's got crazy paddle foot action, crazy legs on there. So we can cast that one out there and we can bloop and pop it like we would a popper or a, a blooping type lure. But we've got that advantage of being weedless. So that means we can fish it right in amongst all that snags and heavy cover. So there you go, there's a few different frogs, definitely worth a go. We've fished them for trevally and all sorts of fish that will smash, smash bait and other, other stuff off the surface. So don't be afraid to throw them at some random species. Let's have a look at a couple of retrieves that are effective when you're fishing frogs. All right, so in terms of retrieving our frog, we're rigged for surface fishing here, but I'll just talk subsurface retrieves first. There's a couple of retrieves that we, we commonly use when we're subsurface fishing. So if I've got that frog weighted for fishing, I can allow it to sink down. And if it's rigged weedless especially, I can just allow it to settle on top of the weed or on top of the structure. And then there's our slow roll. So we can just slow wind that frog and just slow wind it. Those legs will be kicking away underneath the water. You'll feel it pulsing. And it's amazing how many times tick, you'll get that bite, set that hook. And we even use these frogs, especially that 2.75 inch finesse frogs, across the weed beds for flathead with a lightly weighted 2.0 snake locks jig head from TT Lures. And we can get up in a foot of water and we can buzz those weed beds where you don't normally fish. We can just swim that, swim that lure just above the bottom and you'll smack lots of flathead 
fishing that weed that you wouldn't normally fish. So again, we're subsurface fishing, we cast that out there. The other way that we'll commonly, re commonly retrieve it, so we'll slow roll it, otherwise we'll pulse it. So we might give it a few wines, get those legs going, then we'll give it a pause and give the fish time to eat it. Otherwise, we'll lift the rod tip to pulse the legs, and then we'll pause it and wind up the slack. Lift the rod tip to pulse it, pause it and wind up the slack. And we can work that down as deep as we want to deep, as we want to work it just by adding more head weight. So a heavier jig head or heavier, heavier headlocks jig head or heavier snake locks jig head. In terms of surface fishing though, which is where these things are insane, it's awesome to watch them get smashed off the top. So I'll cast that out and now I'm on the top water. What I'll do is I'll buzz that frog on the top. So I'm actually winding it fairly quickly. And at first you'll think, gee, that seems going, like it's going a bit quick. But barra, bass, other species, Murray cod will just hunt that down and destroy it. And you know when you're going at the right speed because you'll hear it. It sounds magic. Those little paddle feet blah, 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 will bubble away in the water. And you'll also leave a bubble trail where the feet have been bubbling up the surface. So you know when you've got, you know when you've got that speed right. Because one, you'll hear it bubble, 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 and two, you'll see it. So that frog there is leaving a nice trail of bubbles and its feet are really bubbling up that surface, making lots of noise, lots of water movement. So that's one way we can retrieve it. If we're fishing it on a chin lock, though, where it floats, we can also slow it down. So we can cast it right in, say, next to a fallen tree or right in amongst some snags, and we can actually just roll it a bit and then pause it leave it sit there. Sometimes you might leave it sit there for 10 seconds. Roll it again, get those legs going on the surface, pause it again. And it's often when you go to move it again, boom, the fish has been sitting underneath it and they'll just come up and annihilate it as soon as it moves again. And if we're fishing our pop frog, we might give it a couple of quick bloops and pops on the surface, pause it right next to that snag. Pop, pop, pause it, give it a bit of a roll, boof, away we go. So there you go. Don't be afraid to fish them subsurface as well as on the surface. If you're fishing them subsurface, slow roll or that pulse and pause. If you're fishing on the top, you might pop and pause or pulse and pause. Otherwise, get that buzzing going, get that movement going, listen for those legs, look for that bubble trail and hang on. Cheers.